Hey, if you're watching this, you know you've already got the most modular knife that's ever been introduced to the American market. Let's step into the bench and show you how to take your standard two-layer knife and go to a monoplaner or the dry decker. If uh, you've bought one of those kits and you've used your QR code and you've scanned into this video, that's what you're here for. So let's hop to it. All right, well, you've bought the world's most modular, flexible knife, and now you want to put, take it to task. Um, what we're going to do is take a standard Jefferson model, our base model ASK uh, multi-tool pocket knife. We've uh, shown you in other videos how to drop the same knife down into a single stack. Really easy to do. We're going to step up to a triple layer, a dry decker at this point. And to go to the triple layer, um, it requires a full tear down of the knife and put back together because we've got to swap out the pivots and mainspring housing. When you go to do this, you'll go online to buy the uh, dry decker expansion kit. You'll get the expansion kit, but you won't get what goes in the slot. You have to plan ahead a little bit. In this instance, I actually want to make a two blade, two tool knife. I call it a square knife because it's got equal parts tools and blades. I've got a spear point kind of craft and a uh, utility uh, CX knife on here, CX style blade. And the blade comes with a back spacer or an opposing spacer. If you buy a tool because you want to put a quarter turn tool in, um, it, then you're going to need something on the other side. You can get a quarter turn tool and you can put opposing spacer, but you've just missed out on something. So you may want to um, get a awl or a sewing awl or some other tool that you don't have and put it in that slot. In this case, we're going to fill the slot up with a blade. We don't need two tools, but we need a spacer on the opposite side. So these are the parts you need to do this. This is the example of what we're going to do, going from two to three layers. Let's get that guy out of the way and uh, let's get into it. First thing we're going to do is a full teardown. You're going to need for tools today a T25 Torx head driver, maybe a little prying tool of some kind, something that's got a taper on it is beneficial. You're going to need some blue paste Loctite. I don't recommend to use liquid. The liquid will interfere with your plastic handle scales and potentially ruin them. The paste works great and it doesn't flow down into the joint. You need some scissors. You need some painter's tape. You may need a pair of pliers. You may need a pair of tweezers. Okay? Painter's tape is to cover up the blade nice and neat so you don't cut yourself by accident. Now, you may be a really sharp guy, but if you don't build knives every day, this is a lot like clock making, watch making. You notice how I guide the tool with my finger down to the blade. I don't want to scratch the hardware up. Uh, even microscopically, I always think about that. Set our screws to the side, we'll reuse those. Let's reach in here now with our fingernail. We're just gonna catch the edge of the plastic and relieve the top injection molded plastic. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna pop our titanium side off. Now you can do this with your finger. You could slide your nail in here, use your nail as the spacer. Look how I'm using this. Or you can use a little tool if you want. Pop one side loose. Remember, you don't want to do a lot of prying. You want to bring everything up all together and then pop one side loose. You'll see the other points are still engaged. This is all under a lot of spring tension. So let's raise it up slightly without bending anything. And now we want to pull up this side. We'll take off this first liner. That'd be your top liner. Let's pull out your first tool, open up, watch here, you don't get your finger caught in the blade, stabilize everything, including the spring, pop the second tool off, you'll notice I'm laying everything in the order we use it. Let's pull the main spring off, now we're going to open the blade up. This is a great time to take a little rag and wipe off your blade. Okay, next thing we're going to do. We're going to take our blue painter's tape and we're going to cut ourselves a rectangle we can throw on there. It'll kind of, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I know you think you're totally good around razor sharp knives and tools, and I'm sure you are. But unless you do it every day, you can fiddle around and put yourself down in the emergency room messing with your knife. So all you do is just lay this across the blade, like so. Wrap it around on the opposite side, like so. Little tiny bit of, just a little tiny bit of CYA. Cover your ass a little bit. It's your fingers, folks. We want you to have your, we don't, you know, your, 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 uh, we want you to go on your adventure, not go get stitches. I always run it off the end a little bit and I leave it sticking out there because these things will poke you uh, quicker than you can imagine. 
I'm trying to do this without tools, so I'm kind of like using minimalism to do this because it may be what you have at your house or maybe you live in the city in uh, New York City and you don't have a big shop outside your house. I mean, I don't know. I feel, you know, I love the city, but I feel bad if you don't have a shop with tools in it to go do man stuff. Um, it's nice to have a tool if you need to to reach in here and you want to add very minimal pressure to where you think it's binding up so that it just pops free like that. You notice when it came out, it took the, the skinny stop pin. You want to really kind of protect that. Uh, now we can grab onto the blade, stabilize the knife. Don't try and take the uh, spacer out. Let's take the blade off. We'll sit it off to the side. Let's take the spacer now. Uh, let's see here. This might be easier today. I'm just going to grab the mainspring and I'm going to pull it out. Super easy. Now we're going to drop the pivots out. Drop the first pivot out. Take the backspacer, drop the second pivot out, and leave the first scale now. Let's remove the short pieces. Let's remove the short mainspring pin. Let's remove the short stop pin. We'll be replacing those. This is your expansion kit. The expansion kit uses the original sides, adds one more skeletonized insert spacer, uses all the original parts, the original screws, just pulls out the original pivots and pins. We have replacement long pivots and long pins. So from here, let's put the knife back together. Let's grab our long pins. You'll notice there's a flat, it's a D-shaped pin. It goes into the flat, that indexes it so it doesn't want to turn. Now at this point, you should have some badass heavy grease. Now, you could put gun oil, but I don't recommend gun, like a light machine oil. I recommend a really good badass, super sticky, dark, black, green, gummy grease. Take a Q-tip, daub it, Q-tip in the grease, wipe a little bit on the shaft and just kind of get around in here. And when you put your knife together, let grease squirt out in a couple little areas. And you can always get in there with a uh, pipe cleaner or a Q-tip and clean that up. Let's put our mainspring back on. Let's put our new pivot pin. That's the fat of the two pins. And if you need a little grease on the side of these, on both sides, the under and top side of that, remember these slip back and forth between the sides under tension. Let's put our spacer back in here. Make sure your spacer, it's got a thin side and a fat side. The fat side goes against the spring. The thin side is staying out of the way of your blade tip so that you don't, your blade doesn't close and get a dull spot. It gives you room here. This is where the blade sits. So let's set this down on here. Push with your thumb, drop it down all the way in. Next, we're gonna put the blade in. Take your blade with the tape on it. Hold this like so. Put the knife on. I flip it around so I point the blade away from me, point it up at a 45 degree angle. I can take my, my, my uh, driver tool, I set it here on top of this spring, and I pull, pull down until that drops in place. I'm going to show you that one more time since that's the thing on this whole uh, little thing that we're doing that's going to jam you up and, and, and cause you a couple little, uh, any grief, it'll be right here. So just set this right here, not in the hole, don't jam it against the plastic, just push down on the spring until it opens and you drop your part in. Once your part's laying in flat, I like the opening of the knife and the tools towards me when I'm working on them. Next thing we'll do, just wanna confirm you've got the logo on the blade end of the knife that keeps everything kind of copacetic. Let's drop in our first skeletonized spacer. These, these are, they, they fill, fulfill two functions, okay? They, create space between the tool. You'll notice there's tension here now. So you gotta push that tension out and you may need to turn this to get that pivot to move around. You, 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 you got a little play in that pivot so you can hold on to the blade like a handle and move that. Once they're all touching, don't just jam them down. You wanna kinda work them all down together as best you can. And that stops you from hogging out the holes and it'll last better over the years. Drop your next spring in, grease on both sides as needed. Remember the defining tool of your knife that you're using always goes opposite. The bottle opener always goes in next to. So let's use our defining tool. We'll press it in place here. It'll drop right in. And I did that a little backwards. I like to put this guy in next to the blade because that's easy. And then this gives me room without the blade in my way 
On this one, you can generally push that in with your thumb, no problem. Okay. From here, we put on. Uh, now we're going to put in our next uh, skeletonized chassis. This is normally where the liner would be, and we put the handle scale on. But since we're doing an expansion, so you'll notice as I push this up that that pivot seems like it's in that way, and that's normal. So push, and uh, you can push this against the side of a table like this until it pops. As soon as you've got it popping in, it's going to want an oil can and do some funky stuff. So just work it down a little bit at a time all over. Try, try not to do it all at once. Work it down all flat. Okay, next um, we're going to put our... Uh, boy, you know what? We need to make sure there's a spring with that blade on the third part. <laughs> Um, you'll put your last spring in, opposing that spring, you're going to put a spacer if you're putting in a blade. Now you may get a breaker, and the breaker looks a lot like this, it's just got a breaker sticking here. Remember, the thin side goes outward, this is our second spacer we're putting on this knife, and then our blade goes on last. Now, um, you guys are going to see me do this because I'm actually familiar with working with blades and I do it all the time. I'm going to set this blade in place, put a little pressure, drop the blade in. Now, you guys should put tape when you're doing that just to protect yourself. Let's get two sides started. I use the side of a wooden table. Now, don't do this on your really nice dining room table and you'll hear it pop in. Once it popped in, boy, you know, it just all comes together like an aircraft fuselage. It's called kind of monocoque construction. We're going to want to take this thin stop pin, work this down in here now. And uh, if it gives you a little grief, you can tap it a little bit. And you'll, you'll feel it give way and it never goes down all the way. It sticks out a little proud. Remember, don't jam on that down too hard or you'll push it through the plastic right here. Don't let it stick up too hard or when you screw it together, it's going to poke through the plastic. It should be the same amount proud that your main spring pivot is. They're the same length. Okay? Once you've got that done, now you can work your handle scale back on. You'll feel it index on the proud pivot and pin sticking up. Sometimes while you're monkeying around with all this, you push one of the pins sticking out a little, one of the uh, pivots sticking out a little bit down here. This one is actually sticking up about 10 thou down here. Don't worry about that. Just make sure it's lined up when you go to put it back together. And when you go to put it together, we're going to cinch it all down and then relax it to tune it. Let's take our main screws. Now, if there's some Loctite on from, and there will be, from when you bought the knife, put in a rag, turn it in there, and get that Loctite off there. Get any grease off there. If you need to, get in here with uh, maybe one of your uh, gun cleaning brushes or a stiff bristled brush from the garage or the uh, mop sink or the doorman's closet in New York City, whatever. Uh, get a little bit of uh, Loctite on here. I use the blue Loctite paste. Not much, just enough to cover a few threads. And then put this on here without scratching everything up. Don't be a ham-fisted ding-dong. And then I go until you'll feel it, you're like you hit a wall, it'll be getting snug, 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 and then just goes boom, doesn't want to go anymore. You could go more and you will break it, don't go more. Take our second screw, some blue Loctite on there, drop it down in, like Happy Gilmore says, get in the hole, you want to go home. Now this one, because it's a little proud, when I go to tighten it, I can feel it sucking up from the bottom. It's not hitting, boom, and then you'll feel it, you'll feel it like, oh, it's stiff, but it's still going, and then you feel it hits the wall. When it hits the wall, you know you're not going to get great action out of the knife. See how it's not closing? Watch when I loosen this just a little bit. <laughs> so if the sides are all precision fit, it may not relax right away, so we'll tighten it down. It's good for all these to pop up while I'm showing you. It's annoying for me, but 
it's good for you to see it. Um, let's tighten it down and then back it off and, and fake like you're going to tighten it and just finger, boop, like just finger super light. Now open the blade up 90 degrees, side load it a little bit, check it again, side load it, and, and then see how the action is. Sounds good? Sounds good. Now you can tighten it a little tiny bit more and see if it still sounds good. That still sounds good. Let's tighten it a little tiny bit more. You can always, you can tighten a knife, uh, you can, after you've snugged a knife down, you loosen it up and relax it. Now you can tighten it down, but when you just loosen it, it may all still wedge in place because of all of those holes gripping onto that fresh new pin. All right, let's, let's open it up, see how it sounds. Still sounds good, let me tighten it. And I am tightening it, you guys, a half a degree. So that was a little too much. I just pulled that half degree out. I'll open it up. Little side load. And that lets everything adjust in there. That sounds nice. That sounds nice. That side's nice and tuned. Let's, uh, let's see how this one sounds. Oh, that's awful, right? So we gotta loosen that a little. And then once you loosen it, you gotta open it up, you gotta side load it to make some space and see how it sounds now. I mean, and that sounds perfect. I wouldn't mess with it. And we'll close this tool. And then the blade, I pull off like so, grab it back here. And that should slap really clean. And it does. So we've taken our two-layer standard ASK Jefferson. You can see when you hold it up to the light, you know, um, you'll want to see uh, almost no gaps in it. You may see a little light peek in from around here. You just don't want everything monkey tight. You want it holding together just the right amount. And this is why we call it not assembling, but tuning a knife. You want it to sound right, feel right, look right. And, uh, and then, you know, if you want to not see light, um, you could drive yourself a little crazy for that. But in the meantime, you've got a perfectly functioning knife that's been perfectly put together and you have it customized to exactly what you want. You wanted um, blades of a certain variety. You wanted blades of a certain setup. You want the tools. How about I do this without... Who's here? Me. And then we'll, we're gonna just set this knife uh, maybe at 45 degrees so you can kind of see. So that's a setup. Now, if you wanna be really persnickety, this is a great time to kind of wipe your blade down, wipe your knives down very carefully, wipe your tools down. And then if you want, now you can start looking at the ends where the grease has popped out and you wanna you really do want to tuck that grease down and out of the way. Now, if I were you, I'd put the blades next to each other and the tools on the outside so you can get to the nail nicks better. But you can play around and find your setup that you like. That's what's really cool about this product. And that is what has motivated me to spend really millions of dollars to bring this to market and all of the struggles that it takes to make a product like this. Because the idea to me is so attractive to be able to make a knife this customizable. A little trick, you can take a gun cleaning brush and you can drag it out onto the towel and you can pull most of that grease out of those little spaces where it doesn't need to be. Get in there with a Q-tip, clean that up a little bit. You can do it on the back side, but I wouldn't get rid of all the grease. You know, having a little grease there, there's nothing wrong with that. Then wipe the knife down and your pockets won't get grease on it from down in those little crevices. A little clean up here gives the appearance that it's cleaned up, but it leaves a layer of grease. So that's what I would do. And then wipe the thing off and you're done. You've made your three layer ASK, your dry decker, and uh, it's still under warranty. You get to suit it up, fit it up, make it your way. I don't know, I think it's the coolest thing ever.